the question is, what are some of the opportunities and strategies that will ultimately grow and link the startup ecosystem? And how can you measure the success of that ecosystem? Yeah, I guess I'm going to continue focusing on the funding part because it's very close to my heart because money means everything. Uh, not, not to me, but the ecosystem is built on basically providing outcomes for investors. Um, and so really, I, I think the, the big part of what happened in the U.S. to enable an innovation ecosystem were changes that allowed endowments and foundations to invest in VC as an asset class. And so the venture capital as an asset class became an accepted uh, investment tool. And because of that, a lot of new funds started to get established across the U.S. and the East Coast and West Coast. And, and, and there were like three or four different rules that came out that allowed that to really happen. Unfortunately, we're not really seeing that here in the region. And I think uh, providing a, an enabling an environment where it encourages investors to become LPs and funds and to invest directly as angels into startups, that really, I think, is a key sort of angle of building a, a, a sort of a startup ecosystem. We've seen some, uh, you, you know, we've seen uh, fund to funds programs that have been launched over the past two years here in the region, mm -hmm. which have had an amazing impact. There's been so many new funds that have been launched because of those. And so it sort of shows that, yes, that, you know, providing that level of LP funding does actually accelerate the number of funds in the market, accelerates the number of startups that are getting that funding, and accelerates the startups getting to their next rounds and raising larger rounds of funding. And I think, I think that was key in sort of what's been happening in the development of the ecosystem. Unfortunately, there's just not enough, right? Each country has one fund of funds programs uh, in, in the MENA region. And that essentially is a single LP. And, and the thing is, the issue with single LPs is if they say no to you and you have a different thesis or a different mindset or you're thinking of, of investing in a different class of, of, fun, of, of, of startups, it, you just have nowhere else to go. Mm -hmm. And so I think enabling that sort of environment where uh, the pools of capital that are available here in the region are paying more attention to venture capital as an asset class are encouraged to in, in lots of different ways that have worked in lots of different countries. And I think, I, I think that has been one of the key drivers of startups being able to grow and scale in the region is the availability of more funds at Series A, the more funds at Series B, and just generally the availability of capital for the venture capital ecosystem has, has grown the ecosystem. But we're still nowhere near where we need to be. Like, if you look at the stats, it's great. You know, you know last year we hit $2 billion of funding across the MENA region. It's a really great number because it's double what it was the year before. But when you take that into context, that's across 18 different countries in the MENA region. And when you look at the comparables globally, small countries in Europe like Belgium or, or the Netherlands have more venture capital funding per year than these 18 different countries that we have here in the Arab world. That's not really very good. And so we're, we're looking at the successes and we're like, this is better than it was last year, which is great. But we're nowhere where we need to be. We're not, we shouldn't be resting on our laurels and saying that these measures that we've taken have been successful. And I think really figuring out ways to unlock pools of capital to be investing as LPs and investing into startups is, is going to continue to be a driver. You know, a lot of startups from around the world come to the region and be like, we're going to raise a lot of money from the Middle East because there's a lot of money here. And unfortunately, that's not the case. You know, there's a lot of money here if you're building a, a you know, a building or a hotel or, or a factory. But if you're a startup in tech and you're just getting started with something new and innovative, there just isn't that much funding and capital available. So we're seeing successes. You know, it's step up. It's doubling every year. It was half a billion dollars and a billion dollars of funding and $2 billion. But we're still, it's not where it needs to be. And I think that's going to be the key driver going forward is the availability of LPs into funds and the availability of that funding to startups. I think uh, all the other measures are important, of course. But 
if you find someone that's amazing and has a world-changing idea here in the region, mm -hmm. they won't have anywhere near the support that they will have anywhere else in the U.S. or anywhere else in developed markets where that funding is available for them. Great, appreciate that. So we'll go to Natalia and then Rogelio and then we'll finish with Anna. Oh, that's a perfect uh, because I was just about to <laughs> pick up on what Hassan was saying. Well, first I would actually quantify what Hassan just said. And there is again two metrics. I'm like on this uh, panel like a nerd, you know, with some numbers. So uh, when we speak about uh, funding and investment available to scale ups, again, let's focus on the scale ups who are more vi uh, viable um, uh, business models and uh, teams. So uh, there is two measures. Uh, there is uh, the um, investing uh, scale-up investing ratio, which is uh, the ratio in uh, capital invested in scale-ups and the GDP of a country. It's important. And this is where what Hassan was just saying is uh, we're looking at uh, general in the region. It's 0.17% of GDP uh, is uh, the, the amount goes into funding of the technology, innovation and digital economy companies. In the UAE in Dubai, it's slightly higher. So 0.12%, oh, uh, here it's 0.17%, uh, but we understand this is the mark, a marker of the developing ecosystem. This is not a marker of developed ecosystem, but at the same time it gives us uh, this indicator that there is a, such a room for us to go with the right stakeholder engagement and the right precision policies there is a room to go. And I think Dubai, the EU is ready. Because the second market that we need to pay attention is, is uh, the ratio of the number of scale-up companies to the uh, 100,000 uh, of inhabitants, um, city or country. And here the UAE has 2.54, which is at par with Belgium, with Luxembourg and the rest. So yes, Dubai UAE has proved to be an attractive magnet for a lot of great founders. And some of the founders manage to become those successful scale-ups. But now we can fix, we can uh, grow that ratio of the funding available to the scale-up companies. And the UAE government is committed to have 20 unicorn companies uh, calling the UAE their home in the next 10 years. And uh, from uh, Dubai Chamber of Commerce, Dubai Chamber for Di of Digital Economy has been just formed last year. And we are releasing our strategy 2022-2024 strategy with a big yet attainable um, um, and ambitious agenda of uh, enhance the infrastructure for the digital economy, tackle these important big issues about liquidity and access to funding bits in VC bits and the capital market uh, liquidity and depth, along with many other uh, aspects that uh, we collectively as ecosystem can tackle to see the digital economy in Dubai in the UAE growing. I'm fascinated by that. I want to talk to you more about that. And they discovered the Ministry of Opportunities the other day, too, which is rather impressive. All right, Rogelio. Let me give you one context. Uh, in the last decade in Latin America, uh, traditional public companies lost $500 billion of value. In that same decade, around 1,000 companies that have received more than $1 million of financing uh -huh. created $235 billion of value. So there's a transition that is happening everywhere, not only in Latin America. So going back to your question, uh, entrepreneurs will go to where opportunities are accessible. Mm -hmm. And opportunities for an entrepreneur are access to talent, access to money, and access to markets. So we have to be clear that wherever you have those drivers and the intangible wealth present and tangible and intangible wealth present at, at an ecosystem level, entrepreneurs will thrive. Mm -hmm. And they don't mind if they have to change country or mm -hmm. city or country or continent, okay? So uh, with this mindset, I think that uh, on the short term, I definitely will see that getting to, in, to a transition where you have a big chunk of your economy coming out of innovation-driven enterprises. And in our case, it's a goal of 20% of the GDP mm -hmm. of a city for coming from IDEs, mm -hmm. makes all the sense of the world, and this pushes in that same transition. On a long-term view, I think that we have to go deeper into promoting entrepreneurship education, 
to the lower levels of the public and private education systems. Because this is uh, uh, the biggest bet as an ecosystem that anyone can take. Very good. And Anna, you get to close out this question. Yeah, I think there was a lot of, uh, there's a lot to say on this topic, first of all. I think, um, you know, in Europe, um, some years ago, or like a decade ago, it was interesting that there was an emphasis on the funding, right? So any investors, how many investors who will fund, you know, and uh, the companies and the investors would say, well, you know, we would love to fund the companies, but there is not really investment ready companies. So on the other hand, you know, there is this whole, uh, you know, we're saying there is not enough uh, funding out there. Obviously, you know, I don't think this is such a huge of a problem because the money is there somewhere. And as you're saying, you know, the opportunities, you know, people who are into it, they will look for these opportunities and um, but we need to you know uh, put a bit of a responsibility also on the entrepreneurs where you need to know what you're doing where you need to do your homework so so it's not only that but um, so it's not only about the funding it's also about having companies investment ready and um, you know having them really ready for this funding however in Europe we have for instance, two concrete actions that I would like to address. So we have this European Innovation Council. It's not a very interesting uh, phrase. However, it's the largest fund uh, that we have in Europe right now with over 10 billion euros that are focused on deep tech companies. So there is a market gap in Europe where we have um, an issue, let's say, in supporting uh, deep tech companies, and this uh, funding is specifically allocated to those. And it's not only throwing the money at the problem, we are also providing a lot of mentoring and a lot of other activities. Another point, co-investment funds. So this is something that's really, really interesting that's going on in Europe, where the government matches the funding of the private investors, and this has been critical for development of many ecosystems in Europe, and it, it's been really, really interesting, and yeah. Great. Well, I appreciate all of your responses. There are more questions that we needed to get through, but we're not going to because this is a huge, expansive topic. But we've got to wrap up. But I just want to go down the line. In one word, what is the word that you're going to use to describe the future of this innovation ecosystem? Where is it going? Just give me one word. Are we optimistic or not optimistic? But can't use that word, but come up with something. So we'll start at the end with Roberto, and we'll make our way down. Um, one word, eh? um, definitely optimistic. Um, I would use the word value. Uh, because this is where we need to focus on and uh, the ingredients and the indicators are there to, to materialize and realize this value here. Great value, okay. Across the borders. Across the borders, okay. I would say prediction because we are having more and more tools where we can be more, um, let's say, focused on how, what the outcome of the companies and investments will be and I think where the, uh, you know, that's where the tools uh, of the ecosystems are going towards. Okay, excellent. Role models that can drive a, a, a transformation in society. Okay, very good. And finally. Uh, opportunity. I think this is the best place to be spending time, money, and everything. Just this is a, so much opportunity out there. So, and that could lead us into a full day discussion, which I wish we had time to do. But today we talked about trends, challenges, opportunities, and strategies that are impacting sustainable innovation. The future looks bright from what I can tell based on all of your responses for entrepreneurs, but also all the stakeholders that make that entrepreneur uh, successful. So it's academic partners, industry, government, the funders, the professional networks, the wraparound service providers, etc. So thank you to all of our panelists and thank you for supporting the innovation ecosystem. Look forward to more discussion with you uh, offline and this will include today's panel. Thank you very much. Thank you.